What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Felipe is continuing to meander out in the Atlantic Ocean, bringing tons and tons of rain and tons and tons of flooding to the U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico at this current time. <laughs> We're looking at potential tropical development in the Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico once again. Something we need to continue to keep an eye on as models continue to double down on that tropical development. We'll have to we'll keep you updated and through the loop on all of this all ahead. But first, we need to talk about Felipe as more information is coming in. It is now a 45 mile per hour tropical storm, pressure of 1,004 millibars. Its current location is 21.2 degrees north and 65.7 degrees west, moving north northwest at 7 miles per hour. It is uh, north of Puerto Rico at this current time. It is mo it is about 200 miles north northwest of St. Thomas, about 700 miles uh, miles south of Bermuda, and it's mo and it's moving at 335 degrees. Tropical storm force winds extend outward 150 miles from the center, and here's the hazards affecting land. We are expecting a f are expecting a further one to three inches of rain with totals of six to twelve inches across the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, portions of northeast and southeastern Puerto Rico. One to two inches with storm totals of two to four inches at this current point. Rainfall will begin on Bermuda on Thursday with rainfall totals of three to six inches expected on Friday. So that's what we have going on. Tropical storm conditions are possible in Bermuda beginning Friday morning. So I would not be surprised if tropical storm watches are issued in, the, in a little bit or so. So that's what we have. Here is the discussion that we have pulled up for you right now. They're expecting this to strengthen up to a 60 mile per hour tropical storm before making landfall and weakening considerably as it merges with a new frontal low. Visible satellite images uh, this morning indicate that Philippe's low-level circulation remains elongated, and the center is still located to the northwestern edge of the area producing deep convection. Convective activity continues to produce heavy rains over the British and U.S. Virgin Islands, as well as northeastern Puerto Rico. Intensity remains 40 knots based on the blend of uh, the latest subjective and objective satellite estimates. Fel uh, Felipe is turned to the north-northwest. Uh, overall, strong, uh, moderate to strong vertical shear is expected to persist over Philippe during the next few days, and very little change in, in uh, intensity excuse me, is forecasted during that time. Once Felipe begins to... Uh, begins to interact with the developing low pressure system to its west and associate upper level trough, all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. It's supposed to get to its peak intensity in between 60 and 72 hours. Then it's supposed to weaken after that. So that's what we have with the latest discussion for Philippe. We're going to go ahead and show you some graphics. Here is what we have according to the cone. It is now expected to actually, there is a tropical storm watch in effect for parts of Bermuda at this current time. Definitely something we need to keep an eye on as things continue to progress. We are looking at a situation right now where this thing is expected to make landfall near Nova Scotia or the U and the U.S. Uh, Canada border near the main Canada border at this current point, bringing some impacts to Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, once again, similar to that of Hurricane Lee just a few weeks ago. So that's what we have with the, according to the cone. If we go ahead and show you the wind history as of right now, you can see it's obviously made that turn all the way to the north northwest. It's been very fluctuate uh, fluctuative all across the board, all across the whole area. It's been just up and down, up and down, up and down latitude wise, and then it's finally starting to make that turn. So that's what we have. Here's our key messages right here. Fl heavy rain is expected to produce scattered flash flooding across Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Tropical storm conditions are possible on Friday. We already covered that. All right, here's number three. Philippe is likely to move over portions of Atlantic Canada and eastern New England, likely as a post-tropical cyclone this weekend. Regardless of Philippe's intensity or structure, interest in these areas should monitor the storm's progress and be prepared for possible strong winds and heavy rainfall. So that's what we have going on with Philippe as of right now. We're looking at potential areas of interest to develop, uh, that will develop in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, and we'll continue to monitor those as we continue to get more information. But as we get into this more active weather season, be sure to check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting. They do individual one-on-one -on -one weather consulting. Do your cater to your local area. For more information, be sure to check out the link in the uh, in the description to their website, and be sure to use code Predictor for fifty percent off your first month. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and show you some model runs. Here is the European at this current time. The European model will show you that the GFS and all the other models that we have going into this. Here's the European. The European 
Lapine has Philippe kind of just meandering and just not really organizing or developing particularly that much until it approaches Atlantic Canada and the United States where it becomes a post-tropical cyclone and makes landfall on, on the main side of the U.S. Canadian border as around a 982 millibar system and then it starts to move inland and absor it gets absorbed with another low pressure system over that particular area. Meanwhile, the European is also picking up on potential tropical development in the Gulf of Mexico. As you can see, we're seeing a 1,000, 3,000, 1,004 uh, millibar system right here in the Western Gulf. Europeans having a little bit of a hard time picking up on it after nine days out. So definitely something we need to monitor as time continues to progress. However, now more and more models are picking up on it, and this is something we need to continue to keep an eye on. So that's what we have with the European. Here's the GFS model as of right here. The GFS has been pretty interesting to say at the very least. The GFS has Philippe just kind of just meandering and gradually strengthening as it approaches the uh, the U.S. Canadian border area. It's expected to make landfall in Maine according to the according to the GFS, and then it's expected to merge with that low pressure system. And for from what I have seen, it, which is pretty interesting actually, if we go if we go ahead and kind of tr if we go ahead and actually uh, ch uh, choose the region for the for New England right here if we go ahead and look at the, uh, look at this we'll show you the main seat uh, we'll show you the this this actually could potentially bring some snowfall to parts of upstate New York maybe more parts of New England in the higher mountainous areas so yeah that'll be definitely interesting to see how this whole thing plays out since it is October and fall is really starting to kick in across much of the United States so that's what we have with Philippe at this current point meanwhile the GFS is still looking at potential areas a uh, potential area of development in the Gulf of Mexico at that current point while bringing one final area of development uh, near the uh, final area of development near the intertropical convergence zone off the main develop uh, off the coast of Africa in the main development region uh, the GFS actually has us getting up to a hurricane before starting to interact with some wind shear and starting to weaken it as time continues to go on before it gets merged with a mid-latitude cyclone over here so that's the situation we have pulling out as of right now that's the GFS uh, model as of right here here's the CMC model here's the 0z CMC at this current point CMC similar situation with Philippe we don't need to talk about that again. Meanwhile, this Gulf potential development at this current point, mainly concentrated in the western half of the Gulf of Mexico, as well as one last area of tropical development like the GFS is picking up on in the next few days or so. So definitely something to, uh, threats to keep an eye on on both in both the main development region one last time, as well as the Gulf of Mexico, seeing uh, depending on how all this stuff plays out. So that's what we have going on according to the CMC model at this current time. Next thing we're showing you is the NavGem. NavGem's been pretty interesting to say at the very least. NavGem's been still having uh, Philippe getting down to hurricane strength before becoming post-tropical and making landfall near New Brunswick, Canada, while bringing tons and tons of impacts to New England before merging with a frontal low-pressure system down the road. And meanwhile, is like the CMC and GFS, bringing one last tropical wave to potentially organize and develop, as well as bring a, a new tropical disturbance and tropical storm potentially across par uh, parts of the Gulf of Mexico. So that's what we have going on with the NavGem. Definitely some stuff we need to keep it Ion. Last thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the Icon model. Icon's been pretty solid so far. Icon model has uh, Philippe just kind of gradually developing and gradually strengthening before making landfall near Nova Scotia, bringing some impacts to the United States, and then and then kind of just kind of merges with that frontal low pressure system. Meanwhile, a new area of interest could potentially develop in the main development region, similar to what we were seeing with the GFS, the CMC, the, and the NavGem. So, be, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a new area of interest tagged in the next few days or so. So that's the situation we have going on with all the model runs right here. However, this isn't exactly the only threat I am keeping an eye on. There is some severe weather. The second severe weather season is starting to ramp up again in parts of the United States. We're paying attention to Texas and Oklahoma. No surprise there. We have an enhanced risk of severe weather for much of the uh, the area, inc including Wichita Falls, outside of Lubbock, Oklahoma City, Norman, those areas. Here's the risk. We have we have a 2% tornado risk at this current time across much of Oklahoma and Texas. We have a 30% hatched wind risk, which means we have a 30% risk of 75 uh, five miles per hour winds or, or, or greater within 25 miles to a point. 
And that includes much of Wichita Falls, Fort Sill, Norman, those areas. And then the last thing before showing you is the hail risk, 30% hatched for hail, which means we have a 30% risk of 2-inch hail or greater happening within 25 miles of a point. In fact, anything with a hatched area, is there's a possibility for at least 2-inch hail going into this. And if we go ahead and read the summary very quickly, scattered uh, scattered into numerous severe thunderstorms are expected through the early morning across parts of the central uh, Great Plains. A very destructive, very large hail and significant severe wind gusts will be the main threats, along with the possibility of a couple tornadoes. So if you're watching this from Texas and Oklahoma, be sure to keep a very close eye on it as time continues to go on. The last thing we're going to go ahead and show you now is the conditions in the tropics. Patrick, you're talking about Philippe. You're talking about these areas of interest. What are the conditions to really support this development? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's the conditions we have. The main development region continues to, funnily enough, keep warming up just a little bit. In fact, we're seeing more and more areas of 30 plus degrees Celsius across much of the central and eastern main development region compared to where we were seeing just a few days ago. So that's pretty interesting in itself. We are still have a massive uh, hot tub of water across much of the Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico, 30 plus degrees Celsius or 86 plus degrees Fahrenheit from the Gulf of Mexico all the way to the main development region. So this is some huge Huge stuff we need to continue to keep an eye on. These waters are still very much record-breaking as we continue to go into hurricane season. So that's what we have for the global sea temperatures. Next thing we need to show you is the ocean heat content. Ocean heat content continues to remain incredibly strong. And that's increasing my concern right there because let's say we have a new area, a new tropical wave come off the coast of Africa. It holds itself together long enough to traverse through much of the main development region, traverse through much of the western part of it, and then enters the Caribbean Sea. What do you see when you get there? Much much better con conditions for rapid strengthening and rapid development. We all saw what happened with Hurricane Matthew back in 2016 when it r just absolutely exploded in intensity in the Caribbean Sea or with Hurricane Maria in 2017 as soon as it entered the Caribbean Sea and intensified at an even faster rate to a 175 mile per hour hurricane before approaching Puerto Rico. We all remember those storms, and the, and with these numbers that the OHC is racking up, that's certainly a possibility going into October. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear. Wind shear has been pretty interesting. It's been fluctuating off and on, off and on, off and on across much of the Atlantic, especially Battleground Zero is in the Caribbean, and that's pretty much the reason why the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean are much more better for tropical developments then uh, into October, then kind of like the main development region is primarily due to the low, decreased wind shear in that area. So these are all threats we need to continue to pay attention, both severe and tropical to at this current time. We're, and we're going to keep you updated on all fronts on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But with that being said, we're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.